Daily Wire top former White House lawyer delivers devastating blow to Cassidy Hutchinson, uh, uh, Hutchinson's testimony. Uh, the lady just straight up lied on the bench. Former Trump White House lawyer Eric Hirschman delivered a damaging blow to Cassidy, Cassidy Hutchinson's testimony against former President Donald Trump on Tuesday, as he claims that he wrote the handwritten note that Hutchinson told the January 6th House Select Committee that she wrote. The note that Hutchinson claims that she wrote stated, and I quote, anyone who entered the Capitol without proper authority should leave immediately, close quote. The column goes on to say, Hirschman, and I'm quoting again, is claiming that a handwritten note regarding a potential statement for then President Donald Trump to release during the January 6th attack on the on the Capitol was written by him during a meeting at the White House that afternoon and not by White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson. ABC News reported this. At Tuesday's January 6th committee hearing, Representative Liz Cheney displayed a handwritten note with Hutchinson testified. Uh, she wrote after Trump chief of staff Mark Meadows handed her note card and pen to take his dictation. One source familiar with the matter confirmed to the Daily Wire that Hirschman is claiming that he wrote the note and not Hutchinson. The handwritten note that Cassidy Hutchinson testified was written by her was in fact written by Eric Hirschman on January 6, 2021. Close quote. This is a spokesman for Eric Hirschman. He told this to ABC News. All sources with direct knowledge, and I'm quoting again, and law enforcement have and will confirm that it was written by Mr. Hirschman. Close quote. Hirschman is widely respected, is a widely respected attorney who came uh, out of a quasi retirement to protect Trump against those around the president who were giving him bad advice. Here's a quote. Anyone that has ever worked with Eric Hirschman knows that the handwriting on that note is his. This is from political strategist Arthur Schwartz. He wrote this on Twitter. Cassidy lied through her teeth and Liz Cheney knew she was lying. Close quote. Now. I could go on with this column, but I'm not going to. I want to go back to you. I want to. I, I. I want you to understand that we're dealing with a communist party. We are dealing with a radical left wing party. We are dealing with a party of chaos. We are dealing with a party of corruption. Hat tip, Daily Mail exclusive. I think you're clear. Voicemail from Joe Biden to Hunter about New York Times report on his Chinese business dealings proves he did speak to his son about his relationship with criminal dubbed the spy chief of China. Joe Biden called Hunter in December 2018, saying he wanted to talk to him after reading a New York Times story about Hunter Biden's dealings with the Chinese oil giant CEFC. Files on Hunter's abandoned laptop previously disclosed by Daily Mail show that he struck a deal with the Chinese company worth millions of dollars. The Times 2018 story pointed out CEFC's chairman Yi Jingming had been arrested in China and his lieutenant Patrick Ho had been convicted of bribery. Hunter accidentally recorded himself referring to Ho as the spy chief of China. After seeing the story online, Joe called Hunter and left a voicemail. I thought the article released online, it's going to be printed tomorrow in the Times, was good. I think you're clear. This is what Joe said to his crackhead son. The message flies in the face of the president's repeated denials that he ever discussed Hunter's overseas business dealings with his son. Guys, I got to say this too. I say the word crackhead. I, I really don't mean that flippantly. Sometimes I do say it out of anger. I'm not going to lie to you, all right? God has convicted me. So sometimes I do say it out of frustration. But the truth of the matter is, I believe that Hunter Biden is a crackhead because his father is corrupt. I believe they are, I, 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 I believe there's a connection there. There's a connection there. This is a party of chaos that we're dealing with. Don't doubt it. Don't doubt it. Don't doubt the fight that you're in. There's a lot of people like me. You happen to be pe uh, 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 people of faith. I know Mike Gallagher is. We're Christians. We're nice, loving people. But I want you to understand Christians are called to fight too. The Bible tells us that when Jesus, Jesus came, he said, man, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. He talks about dividing family members. This is going to happen. This is part of the gospel as well. This is going to happen. We have to understand this. We have to understand the moment that we're in. We have to understand the fight that we are in and we cannot back down or we are going to lose this country, the greatest country that God has ever given man. 
Now is the time to step up, not to back, not to back down. I'm going to give you some stats on some of the abortion numbers because I'm even hearing conservatives say, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Are, are, are we in danger of losing some races in, in November because of uh, Roe v. Wade? Hey, embrace it. Embrace it, conservatives. Dobbs versus Jackson is now the law of the land. Roe v. Wade was some arbitrary activism by seven justices on the Supreme Court in 1973. And now the, the law is correct. It is as simple as that. Embrace it. 